Welcome to the second lesson in our course on advanced material selection. Today we'll be discussing how we set up our selection chart to compare two objectives with one another and some different strategies of assessing trade-offs during design. We left off looking at this chart for our longboard example, trying to optimize both mass and cost performance. But we've discovered there's an inherent flaw with this chart. We need to be comparing performance indices on both of our axes. You could say that a chart like this, looking at mass and cost performance, is one of the most commonly used during advanced material selection with multiple objectives. After all, both of these criteria are often critical during design. There are some protocols that we follow when setting up a chart like this. The first is that we have performance indices on both axes. The second is that these performance indices are looking to minimize the objective, not maximize, like in the case for a basic systematic material selection course. That means that the optimal materials will be found in the lower left-hand corner of this chart. So if we're going to do this for our longboard example, the first thing we need to do is define the performance indices for both of our metrics. Since we're operating under a stiffness limited design, this will have an impact on both of the performance index equations for our metrics, minimizing mass and minimizing cost performance. Utilizing the performance index reference booklet, which can be found in the references tab of this course, we can identify these performance index equations. Let's call the index equation for our mass performance M1 and the index equation for our cost performance M2. Looking at the booklet, we can see that the equation for M2 is shown here. We have the cost of material per kilogram times density divided by Young's modulus to the one third power. Notice how this is very similar to the index that we derived in course three for minimizing the mass of our longboard. But remember, we took that step at the end of the derivation to invert the index because we were maximizing on that chart rather than minimizing. We'll want to use the minimizing version of that equation for this plot here. So now we have our two performance indices. We can plot them with M1 on the y-axis and M2 on the x. And now we've met all of our criteria utilizing our two performance indices on the same plot, looking to minimize the objectives so the key materials can be found in the lower left-hand corner. But if we look at this chart, we see that there's not one material candidate that stands out for both of our objectives. So what do we do now? Let's take a step back from our example for a moment and look at a generic chart to talk about some terminology for some different bubbles or solutions we can see during multiple objective optimization. A solution is a candidate that meets our constraints, but doesn't necessarily optimize the objectives. A dominated solution is most assuredly not optimal. There are bubbles that are better for both metrics. A non-dominated solution is one where you can find bubbles that are better on one metric or the other, but not both. And finally, we have this, a trade-off curve. This is a non-mathematical sketch along where our non-dominated solutions can be found. Now, maybe you got lucky and you can see from your chart that there are one or two material candidates that clearly outperform the rest, but this often doesn't happen. So what do we do? Well, there are a few strategies that we can use to help assess our trade-offs. The first is simply drawing that trade-off curve that I talked about and using our intuition to select the materials that best fit our needs. If we're looking at the longboard example here, we can see that both pine and bamboo perform really well. Carbon fiber, which was an option that we mentioned at the end of our previous course, does lay along our trade-off curve, but it's a lot more expensive than the other options. But depending on the end use, this could be okay. Another way to address the challenge of trade-offs is by looking at all of your objectives and setting all but one to actually be constraints. This is actually quite common when you're dealing with cost, as there's often an upper limit to your budget when you're designing something. However, this isn't truly optimizing because you've now moved things from objectives to constraints. The last option is much more mathematical. 
and involves what's called a penalty function. This function allows us to draw a series of parallel lines across our trade-off plot, hoping to find the tangent with our trade-off curve to allow us to define the relationship between our two objectives via the slope. This is much more complicated and is not something we're going to be covering in this course. If you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend that you check out Professor Mike Ashby's book, Material Selection and Mechanical Design, to learn more. And with that, we've come to the end of this lesson. We've shown how we set up our selection plots to consider two objectives during our ranking step, and we've talked about some different strategies on how we address trade-offs. In the next and final lesson of this course, we'll be looking at a case example of selecting a material for a car door panel using ANSYS Granta EduPack, where we'll be ranking multiple objectives. See you then.